Welcome back to News Across Nigeria. The good news coming out of Oshun State in the southwest is that it has commenced the second phase of the distribution of the tablets of knowledge. Now, I will tell you what that is if you're not from that axis in just a moment. First, we'd like to remind you to please... The Oshun State government has commenced the second phase of the distribution of the tablet of knowledge, properly known as Okwan Imo to senior secondary school, uh, secondary school students in all public high schools across the state. Kicking off the flag off ceremony of the distribution at the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the state deputy governor, Titi Layo, Tomari Laoye, Laoye, says the government is committed to improving the quality of the education sector. The deputy governor, who was represented by the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education, Lawrence Oyeniron, explained that the device which has textbooks of all required subjects in it will greatly reduce the risk of bulk carrying of textbooks and teaching and simplify learning for the students. Happy because the tablet of knowledge, which is acknowledged both nationally and internationally, is uh, a tablet that makes teaching and learning easier in the state of uh, Osu and uh, we request our students to make good use of it because it's a great opportunity for them to have uh, a tablet of knowledge of this uh, nature. Aside from that, both principals and subject teachers have been enjoined to ensure that they give the desired guidance to these students on the proper use of uh, appointment. Now we'll be speaking to the Permanent Secretary of the Ocean State Ministry of Education, Mr. Lawrence Oyenio, who is joining us via telephone to tell us more about this project. He's speaking from Oshogbo, the Ocean State capital. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Oyenio. Let me start by asking you, what was the acceptable, how was it accepted amongst the students? It's like a little laptop, it's a tablet. How was it, how was, how was it accepted amongst the students? I can't really hear Mr. Lawrence Oyenira, we do apologize, appears to be a glitch of some sort. He is the permanent secretary, Minister of Education, we're trying to speak with to tell us about the boost in the education sector to make learning easier for children there. And to that effect, a tablet was introduced uh, as part to sort of add to the textbooks or replace them, so to speak. So. Um, but it is a boost uh, in the Oshun State education sector. And if we can get him back on the phone, we will. In the meantime, to the northwestern part of the country, the Kaduna State Government says it will not spare any civil servant that is involved in the illegal sale of land belonging to government institutions, agencies, and offices. The State Deputy Governor, Bala Bantex, disclosed this while declaring open a two-day workshop for spokespersons to governors in northern Nigeria, organized by the United States Embassy in collaboration with the Nigeria Union of Journalists, the NUJ in Kaduna. He explained that a situation where civil servants who were supposed to protect all government lands and other property under their care and connive with politicians to sell such land in the past regime will not be condoned by the present administration. From there, motorists and road users plying the Calabar Odun Paton Itu Road can now heave a sigh of relief as the Cross River State Government has commenced palliative measures on the road, which hitherto was rendered impassable, causing a traffic gridlock. The road of Federal Highway has remained in a terrible state, subjecting motorists and other users to spend nights at the bad spots on a journey that have taken less than an hour before. Our report today focuses on the federal government road, which has for many years and counting served as a death trap following its bad state. This road is the link between Akwaibom, Rivers, Abia, 
and a few other states and emanates from Calabar, the Cross River State capital. Traveling here in the last few years has been described as a nightmare by commuters, some of whom have had to abandon their journey or endure waiting in line for long hours. I'm just coming back from um, um, a burial now. I am stuck here. I've been here for more than four hours in Odupani Road Block. Uh, the road is in a deplorable situation. People are stuck here. It is said that a good network of roads is a precondition for economic growth. And it looks like the crossover state government doesn't want the state to lag behind other economies and thus has begun remedial work on some portions of the road. A development some of the commuters are pleased with, especially as the yield tide approaches. All this road will be passing Barako Road. With this one now, we appreciate what this government of Ayade, what they are doing now, we appreciate that. If it can continue like this, we'll be very happy. Engineer Godwin Akeke of the Cross River State Ministry of Works says the intervention exercise will continue in view of the encouraging weather. This is the second spot we are working on. After here, there are several other bad spots we are also said to intervene and what basically we are doing is to see how to stabilize the subgrade remove the unsuitable material from what you can see and then we stabilize with hard core while the state government begins remedial works on the road some road users have also called on the federal government to stand up to its responsibility of providing a permanent intervention You're watching news across Nigeria. This is your go-to program for what's happening politically, socially across the Nigerian states in the Federation. Coming up, Ebony State is thumbs up for rice production and we'll tell you why and why the government is being called on to invest more money so that rice can be a thing that can be exported to other parts of the world, not just in Ebony State to be consumed by the people there. Stay with us.